Hello. Uh, welcome back to the uh, sessions in the course on uh, transmission and uh, distribution. So in my last session, I had uh, discussed at length about short line model of a transmission line. So short line, uh, if we say, uh, want to define it in terms of length, you can say transmission lines uh, less than around 100 kilometers. But uh, rather than specify the line, we would specify the more model. And we can say a short line model is one wherein we neglect the capacitance of the line. Okay. So though we use the word short line, it doesn't mean that you cannot use this model for a line which is say 200 or 250 kilometers. Clear. So we will progress from that and see what are the other uh, models that are available. So this is Professor uh, uh, Omar Rao bringing you the lectures under the e Sikshana program of uh, VTU. I am a professor at uh, RB College of uh, uh, Engineering, uh, Bengaluru. So this is a course on transmission and uh, distribution, uh, module three. And uh, in this uh, session, we will be uh, talking about Ferranti effect and uh, the medium transmission line that one that it has two popular model models. And uh, in this session, I will be uh, discussing one popular model, namely the T model. So first, let us see what is this Ferranti um, effect. So it is named after the person who discovered that uh, in 1980. And what he observed was that at times, the receiving end voltage becomes much higher than the sending end voltage. Under normal conditions, what happens is the receiving end voltage is lesser because there is a drop in the line. And because of this drop, the receiving end voltage is de definitely less than the sending end voltage. But under some conditions, he observed that the receiving end voltage can in fact be greater than the sending end voltage. And this phenomenon came to be called as a Ferranti effect uh, after uh, Sir S. Z. Ferranti. So you see, if you take a transmission line, I have the inductance of the line and we also have the capacitance, the capacitance between the conductor and ground. And from our basic uh, knowledge of electrical engineering, we know that the capacitor draws a leading current, right? That means the current drawn by the capacitor leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Whereas the inductors, they draw a lagging current or the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So on analysis, it was discovered that this capacitor charging is what is the reason for this Ferranti effect. And if the receiving end voltage is low, higher, then it may damage the equipment because the equipment is uh, designed for a particular uh, voltage. I think this is best understood with the help of a phasor diagram, right? So we will see what it is. Now let's just uh, consider this, this line, right? So this is one of the models of the line. And uh, here I have the line resistance lumped and the line reactance lumped. And what I have done here is I have split the capacitance into two equal shunt capacitances. Because it's a distributed parameter, I can lump it. I can lump it either at the sending end or at the receiving end or in the middle. I can lump it anywhere. So one popular model is to lump half of it at each of the ends, at the receiving end and sending end. Clear. So what is this capacitance? Don't think I'm connecting a capacitor. This capacitance is nothing but the capacitance of the line itself, which I have modeled as a lumped capacitor as a lumped capacitor. 
So now let us draw the phasor diagram for this. Now, as I told you, as I told you, the phasor diagram, it's always good to start drawing from the receiving end. You can draw it from the sending end also, no problem, but uh, easier to draw from the receiving end. So let's start. So the receiving end voltage is VR. So I draw a reference vector VR here. This will be my reference here. Now let me call this as CR. That means the capacitance modeled at the receiving end. Let me call this as CR. So you can see that the voltage across CR is nothing but VR, right? And if you see this, what will be the current IC drawn by the capacitor? This current IC will lead the voltage VR by 90 degrees because it's a pure capacitor. So you see, that is what I have shown as IC, right? Leading VR by 90 degrees. So this is the current drawn by the capacitor. Yeah. So now what will be the current flowing through this? I have, I have not assumed any load. I have assumed a no load condition. So there is no receiving end current. There is only receiving end voltage. And the only current drawn at the receiving end is because of this charging capacitor. Therefore, the current flowing through Rx will also be IC. The current flowing through Rx will also be IC. Clear? Fine? Fine. Now, what, are the, what, is the, what will be the sending end voltage? The sending end voltage will be, Vs will be Vr. So we know this VR plus plus IC IC into Z, where Z is R plus JX. So basically, it will be the receiving end voltage plus the drop in the impedance of the line. Now, this drop has two components. One is the drop across the resistance and another is drop across the inductive reactance. Now, what is the drop? What is the phasor of the voltage drop across the resistance, across any resistance? So we know that in the resistance, the current and voltage are in phase. Therefore, the drop across the resistor R will be in phase with the current through R. And what is the current through R? It is IC. Hence, the drop across the resistor is in the direction of IC as the same parallel to the phasor IC. So you see here, IC is leading VR by 90 degrees. So IC into R is drawn in phase with IC. Clear? Next, what is the voltage drop across the inductor? So we know that in an inductor, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees or the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So therefore, the drop across the capacitor will lead the current, uh, sorry, the drop across the inductor will lead the current by 90 degrees. And what is the current flowing through this inductor? It is IC. So IC into X will lead IC by 90 degrees. So that is this. And now what is Vs? Vr plus IC into R plus IC into X, which is Vs. Yeah. So you see what you're actually doing is when I have a re receiving end voltage Vr and I have purely a charging current, which leads Vr, you can see that it creates a drop in the inductor, which is 180 degrees out of phase. 180 degrees in phase with VR. So you see, if VR is in this direction, IC into X is in this direction. So this is the reason for reduction in the voltage of the sending end. This is what Ferranti discovered and this is called as Ferranti effect. Clear? So if somebody asks you what is Ferranti effect, what will be your answer? It is the effect by which the receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage. That is the Ferranti effect. What is the reason for the Ferranti effect? What is the reason for the Ferranti effect? The reason is the charging current drawn by the capacitance of the line. Clear. 
and when does parenti of a uh, effect uh, you know appear it is when the system is under light load or no load if there is a load what will happen if there is a load now i will have a current load current normally all the load currents will be lagging okay so the reactive component of this load current will be in opposition to ic so therefore this effect will not, and ic will be very small i have drawn here an exaggerated phasor only for explanation so ic will be very small when you take the full load of the line so in such a case it will not occur so ferranti effect will occur only under light load or no load conditions is it clear so what is ferranti effect ferranti effect is the phenomenon by which receiving end voltage is greater than sending end voltage why does it occur it occurs because of the charging currents drawn by the line capacitance and when does it occur it occurs during light load or no load conditions can we reduce this ferranti effect definitely so the rise in voltage is proportional to the square of the length of the lines the line the rise in the voltage is proportional to the square of the length of the line so in short lines this is not very obvious okay whereas with longer lines the ferranti effect is more obvious so what is the reason the reason is the charging current so i should reduce the charging current can i reduce the charging current i cannot reduce because the charging current is drawn by the line capacitance it's a design parameter so the current it draws i can't reduce what can i do i can counteract so what 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 will i do you see here so at the receiving end supposing i connect an inductor i connect an inductor what what will this inductor current draw this will this inductor will draw a lag current lagging vr so i can offset this leading current with a lagging i can offset this leading current with a lagging current therefore to reduce ferranti effect we can connect shunt reactors at the receiving end but please be careful this ferranti effect occurs only under light load or no load conditions when the system is loaded the voltage will drop so if you leave these reactors when the system is loaded the voltage will further drop at the receiving end okay so what you should do is at the receiving end you must have both shunt capacitors i'm not talking of the capacitance of the line i'm talking of an external shunt capacitance and also a reactor both will be connected at the receiving end so when the system is heavily loaded shunt capacitor will be switched on because under heavy load conditions the voltage receiving end voltage will drop when the system is lightly loaded the reactor the capacitor is switched off if you leave the capacitor on the voltage will further increase so the capacitor is switched off and the reactor is turned on so we have to be careful to switch on and off the capacitor and the reactor at the receiving end at proper times so for lines greater than 400 km uh we can also connect additional reactors in the midpoint of the line to compensate for this ferranti effect now in underground cables in underground cables what happens is the charging current is very high okay very high therefore the current drawn by this will be very high and in underground cables if the line length the cable length is more than 15 to 20 km you can have very high receiving end voltages under light load conditions so if we have under ground cables we may have to provide compensation that is reactor uh, reactors at intervals of 15 to 20 kilometers otherwise you have a danger of um, having incurring very high voltages clear yeah? so this is about ferranti effect so how can we how can we mitigate ferranti effect or reduce its effect we can reduce it by connecting shunt reactors at the receiving end and maybe at the midpoint also for very long lines next let's move on 
to the T model of transmission line of medium lines. So this T model is one popular model, one of the models. And uh, medium lines are normally between 80 or 100 to 250 kilometers. This is called as a medium line. So for this length, you cannot afford to neglect your capacitance. We just saw, you know, if I neglect the capacitance, I won't be able to account for the Ferranti effect. I won't know how much the receiving end voltage will rise under uh, light load conditions. So I need to design for the reactor and so on. So therefore, the capacitor has to be modeled. So based on how we model the line resistance, inductance, and capacitance, there are two popular models. They're called as the nominal T and the nominal pi models. Clear? So let's see what they are. So in the nominal T model, it, it comes from the letter T. So in, in T, you have a straight line at the center. So what I have, I have the sending end, I have the receiving end, the load is connected to the receiving end. Now I connect the entire capacitance of the line lump entire capacitance, I lump it and put it at the center. So you see Y. This Y is due to the capacitance. I put it at the center. And the impedance of the line, that is R plus JX, I split it into two equal parts. Please remember, this is only a model. It's a circuit model. In the line, actually the parameters are distributed throughout the line. Here. Yeah. But I have to write a circuit model. So this is one model. So what is done? The impedance is split into half. And at the center, we lump the entire capacitance. So you see, I have R by 2, X by 2. Then I have R by 2 and X by 2. So the current and there is a load connected. There is a load connected. The receiving end current is IR. Voltage is VR. Sending end current is IS, voltage is VS, and I have an impedance of R by 2 plus JX by 2 on either side, and an admittance Y, admittance is only capacitive, lumped at the center. And the current drawn by this capacitance is denoted by IC. Right. So now let's draw the uh, phasor diagram. Let me choose a different color. Okay. So where do we start? Let's start with VR. So you see, you draw, I, I'm just drawing again over this, right? So that you know how to draw it. I told you don't memorize the phasor diagrams. So I have VR, I draw VR. Then I have a current IR, which is lagging VR by an angle phi R. So this is the first thing you will draw. Draw the phasor VR with uh, current I, IR uh, lagging by an angle phi R here. So now let's come to the right half, this here, here. So what is the current flowing through this section? It is equal to IR. It is equal to IR. So the drop in this resistor R by 2 will be in phase with IR and the drop in this X by 2 will lead IR by 90 degrees here. So let's draw that. So I have VR and then you see IR into R by 2. That is the drop across this resistor R by 2, which is in phase with IR. And IR into X by 2, which leads this current by 90 degrees. So I what do I get when I add these three? So when I add VR, with the drop in this section, I get this midpoint voltage, which I have denoted by VC. So this is VC. This is VC. Yeah. So um, then, now let me choose a different color, maybe green. Yeah. Next, so I know the voltage VC. Now, what is the voltage across this capacitor? The voltage across this capacitor is VC. Therefore, the current it draws IC will lead VC by 90 degrees, fine. So you see, this is VC, this is VC, and the current the capacitor draws leads VC by 90 degrees. I have drawn it here, just here, this, 
this is the current. So this is again blue. I want a different color to differentiate. Fine. Okay. So I got, got IC. I got the direction of IC. Now, what is IS? What is this current? So if you apply KCL at this node, IS will be equal to IR plus IC. So I have IR and I add IC to it. So you see this one, this is IC, IC to it, I get IS, I get IS. Okay, so IR plus IC is equal to IS. So the current which flows through this left half is IS and therefore the drop here in this resistor R by two will be in phase with IS, that is IS into R by two is in phase with IS and IS X by two will lead this by 90 degrees and I get VS. Clear? So don't memorize this phasor diagram, you can easily draw it. I'll quickly again recap step by step. Start with VR, draw IR at an angle of pi R, okay? And then the drop IR R by two is in phase with IR and I R X by two leads it by 90 degrees, I get VC. That is the voltage of the midpoint. Then the current IC leads VC by 90 degrees. So if I add it to I R, I'll get IS. Then IS R by two is in phase with um, IS and IS X by two leads IS by 90 degrees and I get VS. This is how you draw the phasor. Now let's uh, see what all I can um, do more with this. So I think the model, mathematical uh, model, not the mathematical model, the circuit model is clear and the phasor diagram is clear. Now let's try to do some things. So what is VC first of all? VC is VR plus IR into Z by two. Z by two is R2 plus J X by two. Okay, so here you see VC, VR, IR, they're all in bold, that means they're all phasors. And what is IC? IC is VC into Y. Y is the admittance due to the line capacitance, shunt admittance it's called as. So IC is equal to Y into VC, right? So I substitute for VC from this. So you see VC is VR plus IR into Z by 2. I substitute this. So I get the expression for IC. Next, applying KCL at this node, I get IS is equal to IR plus IC. That is IR plus IC is this YVR plus Y into Z by 2 into IR. Clear? So now I have here, I rewrite this by clubbing the terms of IR. I get IS is equal to YVR plus I1 plus YZ by 2 IR. Here. Now, is this relationship striking some chord in your mind? It should. How did we write IS? IS is equal to CVR plus BIR in terms of generalized coefficients. So directly by relating, I can see C will be Y, CVR plus D I R D is one plus Y Z by two. So I got the generalized coefficient C and D. Yeah. Okay. Next, let's find out what is A and B. Right. So I again from the circuit model, I get V S is V C plus I S into Z by two. Okay. And VC is VR plus IR into Z by two. That is the drop here plus VR. This is VC. And IS, this is IS. We just derived it previously. YVR plus one plus YZ by two IR into Z by two. Clear? So let me collect the terms of VR. So I have here VR. So is one 
and here if you take y into z by 2 into vr so this term is here vr into 1 plus yz by 2 next i collect the terms of ir so first here i have z by 2 then here again i have another z by 2 and here i have yz by 2 into z by 2 that is y by 4z square that is these two terms together multiply okay. now i can take z outside because it is there in all the terms and write it like this ir into z into 1 half plus half will become 1 plus yz by 4 neat expression now we know the uh, relationship of uh, vs in terms of generalized coefficients. Vs is equal to AVR plus BIR. So A will be 1 plus YZ by 2. AVR plus BYR. Z into 1 plus YZ by 4. So now we have derived all the four coefficients. Okay. And you remember we saw A is equal to D. So you see both are equal to 1 plus y, z by 2. And you can check a, d minus b, c will be equal to 1. Right? So this is the generalized circuit constants for a nominal T model. Now regulation, we can define in two ways. One is no load voltage minus full load voltage as a percentage of full load voltage. This is one way of doing that. The other one is we can say the sending end voltage on full load minus the receiving end voltage divided by receiving end voltage. The values you get will be slightly different, but these are two different ways of defining the regulation and uh, it won't differ very widely by a small amount. There will be a difference. We'll see when we do the problems. Next, we know the losses. What is the loss in the circuit model? Half here. Here the current is IR. So IR squared into R by 2. And the current here is IS. IS squared into R by 2. So the loss is IR squared into R by 2 plus IS squared into R by 2. So we can calculate efficiency as output power by output power plus losses into 100 as before. Next. We will see a numerical uh, example how to solve uh, this problem. A three phase 200 kilometer line is delivering a load of 100 megawatts, 0.8 pf. Sorry, it is not lace, it is lags at 220 kV. So the receiving end voltage is 220 kV. The conductor resistance is 0.1 ohm per kilometer. And reactance is 0.3 ohms per kilometer. And the line charging admittance is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 more per kilometer. Calculate ABCD parameters, the sending end voltage, the sending end power factor, the regulation, efficiency, etc. using nominal T model. Very easy. Do it step by step. You will not have any issue. Let us see. So R is... So can we use nominal T model? Yes, it's 200 kilometers. So it is a, a medium length line. So you can use a nominal uh, T model. So R is 0.1 ohms per kilometer into 200. It gives you 20 ohms is the resistance. Reactance is 0.3, 200 kilometers is 60 ohms. Therefore, Z is equal to 20 plus J 60 ohms. Be careful. You have to use the complex number. Don't try to use the magnitudes. A, B, C, D are all complex numbers. Students very often make the mistake of taking magnitudes. Then Y is J3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 moles per kilometer. So into 200. So that will give me J6 into 10 to the power of minus 4 more. So in any anything when you solve, this is the first thing you have to do. Calculate what is R, what is X, what is Y. Then in this model, R by 2, X by 2, R by 2, X by 2, and Y in the middle. Clear. Over. Now, A, B, C, D are a direct formula you have. So, A is 1 plus Y, Z by 2. 
I'll just show you. You should write it correctly. One plus y. Y is j. It is capacitive admittance. Capacitive uh, admittance is j plus j. Reactance is minus j. So j into six into ten to the power of minus four, and z is twenty plus j sixty by two. So you can simplify. Be careful of this j here and j here. J square is minus one. These are all small things where uh, students often make mistakes. So I get point nine eight two plus j sixteen to ten to the power of minus four, which is point nine eight two at an angle of zero point three five degrees. So very close to one. A is normally very close to one. Next, I have B. B is Z into one plus Y Z by four. So Z here I have taken the polar coordinate because I have to do a multiplication. Okay, and um, one plus Y into Z by four. So when you simplify, you get B is sixty two point seven at an angle of seventy one point seven three three degrees. B has got the unit of ohms. C is equal to Y as per the T model, so it is J six into ten to the power of minus four moles, and D is equal to A, so D will be equal to point nine eight two at an angle of thirty five degree. Yeah, so you have found out the A B C D constants. Next, what do I want? I want to find out the receiving end current and voltage. Let us do that. And the sending end voltage and current. Fine. So we, I told you, we'll always whenever we we do start the phasers, we will start with receiving end as reference. See, it is not mandatory. But then, reference means what? I start with its angle as zero degrees. Ultimately, your phase angle will will be the same. The difference between any two phasers, the angle difference will be the same. It will depend on what you choose as reference. The difference won't change with reference. So the easiest one is to choose the receiving end voltage as reference. So let me choose the receiving end voltage as reference, and it's a three-phase circuit. And whereas all my R, Y, Z, etc., they're all on single-phase basis, so I have to convert it to single-phase line to neutral voltage. Not not correct to say single-phase. Instead of line from line to line, we should convert it to line to neutral. You can say per phase, not single phase. Okay, per phase. So the phase-to-phase -phase voltage is 220 by root 3. That is 107, 127 kV per phase. That is line to neutral. Per phase means line to neutral voltage. So I R, I R is 100 megawatt, 100 kilowatts. So 100 into 10 to the power of 3 power receiving end power divided by 3 because I need per phase. Divided by three into one twenty seven, the voltage per phase point eight. So why did I take this three? Because I need the single phase power. Hundred kilowatts is the three phase power, right? And all these are or uh, done on a single phase equivalent. So the single phase power is hundred by root three. Sorry, hundred by three. So that is the three in the denominator. So the current is three hundred and twenty eight amperes. And what will be the phaser at an angle of minus thirty six? What is this minus thirty six? Point eight power factor. So, a uh, power factor of point eight corresponds to an angle of minus thirty six point eight six degrees. The minus is because the current lags the voltage. As I told you, normally our loads are all lagging loads. So since we take the current to lag the voltage, I take it as minus thirty six point eight six degrees. See nothing very big in the problems, very easy. Now I can find out the sending end voltage. You can use the formula and go on doing. You can find V C. V C is V R plus I R into R by two plus J X by two, and then V S is that you can do. But directly, if you have ABCD constants, this is very easy. After all, ABCD constants have been derived only from those equations. So best use ABCD constants. So VS is AVR plus VIR A. Okay, VR V 
E I R. Okay. So I get 142. When I do the simplification, I get 142.13 at an angle of 5.05 degree is we are. Next. IS. IS is C V R plus B I R. C V R is 127 kilovolts. B is equal to A 0 0.982. And IR is 328 at an angle of minus 36 degrees. So you get 283.54 at an angle of minus 24 degrees. Now remember the sending end voltage you calculated 142.13 is the line to neutral voltage. Line to neutral voltage. Therefore, the line to line voltage is into root 3, that is 246.176 kilovolts. 246.176 kilovolts. That is the line to line voltage. Next, I need the sending end power factor angle. So the voltage is 5.05. The current is minus 24. So the difference between these two will be 5.05 minus of minus 24. That is 29.05 degrees. Therefore, the sending end power factor is cos of that, that is 0 0.874. 0 0.874. Like. Okay. Now, let us find the regulation. Regulation Vs minus Vr by Vr into 100. Vs is 142.13. We saw that. And VR is 127 by VR into 100. I got 11.91%. Now we had one more formula for regulation. No load voltage minus full load voltage by full load voltage. What that means is when the system is fully loaded and you throw the load, reject the load, remove the load, what will be the voltage at the receiving end? It will go up. So that is, that is the meaning of that. How will I know? See, what is it? VR is the no load voltage. No load voltage means what? IR is equal to zero. No load means IR is zero. So when IR is zero, what will be VR not? VR not will be VS by A because VS is AVR plus BIR, right? When IR becomes zero, if I keep the same sending end voltage, my receiving end voltage will be VS by A. So that is 144.73. I want you to notice another thing here. Under no load, under no load, see my sending end voltage is 142. 142 is my sending, when IR is zero, sending end voltage is 142, but the receiving end voltage is 144.73. What is this? You're seeing. All right, Ferranti effect. Yeah. Otherwise, you have, an, uh, you have a term there, plus BIR, and IR will have a lagging power factor. Now, that is removed. IR is made zero, means you will see the receiving end voltage shifts up. This also illustrates to you the Ferranti effect. So, the regulation using this formula can be calculated as, as 144.73 minus 127 by 127. That is 13.96. You see, there's not too much of a difference between these two. Anyway, for completeness. Now, what is the sending end power? 3 into Vs, Is, cos phi S. Why did I use 3? Because Vs, Is, they're all on face. Therefore, 3, Vs is 142, Is is 283.45, and cos phi S is 0.874. So I have 105.63. Receiving end power is 100. So I get 100 by 105.63, 94.67%. You can also find the losses. IR squared into R by 2 plus IS squared into R by 2. And output plus losses also will be efficiency. We'll get the same value. Yeah. Now, uh, we will take up one numerical uh, to uh, illustrate power factor improvement. Okay. How do I improve the power factor? So, a single phase 50 hertz line supplies a load of 3 megawatts 
megawatts, remember, at 0.8 PF lag through a line 50 kilometers long, short line. So we can use the short line model to simplify our life. Resistance is 0 0.0195 ohms per kilometer. And inductance is 0 0.63 millihenry per kilometer. So you see, the inductance can be specified as reactance in terms of ohms per kilometer or inductance in terms of millihenry per kilometer. And receiving end voltage is 11 uh, kV. Determine sending end voltage, transmission efficiency, regulation. And what is the capacitor I have to add at the receiving end? To reduce the regulation by 50%. That means, see, regulation is because of the drop in the line, voltage drop in the line. So I can improve the regulation by connecting a capacitor. So what is that value? The question, understand the question. What value of capacitor should I include so that my regulation comes down by 50%? And receiving a voltage is still 11 k. This is the problem. Interesting. You will see some interesting things. So R is 0 0.0195 ohms for 50 kilometers is 0 0.975 ohms. X, L omega. Reactance is L omega. L is uh, 0.63 millihenry. It's 50 hertz. So 2 pi F will be 314 into 50 is the line length 9.891 ohms. Here, yeah. so you have R and you have X. Next, IR is 3 into 10 to the power of 6. This is the power 3 megawatts. 3 megawatts. And it's a single phase line. So I can take the voltage as it is. You don't have to divide by root 3. It's a single phase line. So 11 kilovolts by 0.8. It's 340.9 amperes. Okay. So I will use the approximate uh, equation for the short line model. Vs is equal to Vr plus Ir into R cos pi R plus Ir into X sine pi R. Okay. So we substitute for that. Vr, 11 kilovolts, Ir. R is 0.975 ohms, cos phi R is 0.8, IR we calculated is 340.9 and X we calculated is 9.891 and sine phi R is 0.6, cos phi R is 0.8 and sine. So I get 132.89 volts, that is 13.289 kilovolts. So regulation is 13.289 minus 11 by 11, 20.81%, quite high, 20% drop. Okay, 20% regulation is bad. Anyway, losses, since it's short line, short line model I have chosen, loss is I squared R. So I is 349.9 squared, R is 0.975 into 10 to the power of minus 3 I did to convert it into kilowatts. So if I don't put this, you will get in watts. If I put 10 to the power of minus 3, I get 113.3 kilowatts. And what is the load? What is the load? That is 3 into 10 to the power of 3 kilowatts. That is 3 megawatts. 3 megawatts is 3 into 10 to the power of 6 watts or 3 into 10 to the power of 3 kilowatts. So 3 into 10 to the power of 3, this is in uh, kilowatts. Okay, this is in kilowatts. I get 96.3. Now what we do to improve capacitor, you see here I have the receiving end load. Nothing about the load will change. The load is still 3 megawatts at 0.8 PF. I can't change that. That is my load. And receiving end voltage is still 11 kilovolts. I put a capacitor here. I put a capacitor here. What this capacitor will do is it will compensate for this lagging current and improve the regulation. We will see how it is done. Now, what do I want? What is my specification? I want to put a capacitor which will improve the power of regulation by 50%. 
So my old regulation was 20.81, right? So I want to improve it to 10.4, half of it. And what is the regulation? Is Vs minus 11 into 11. So this is in percentage. So in terms of per unit, it would be 0 0.10405. I want this. This is the definition of regulation. I want a regulation of 11%, I'm sorry, 10.4%. So for this, what should be my sending end voltage? I need to calculate. I can calculate the sending end voltage. 12.14 kilovolts should be the sending end voltage. Right? Now, receiving end, receiving end, IR, what is IR? Power. So you see, I took 10 to the power of 6 here because this is in watts divided by voltage. It's single phase, so you don't have to divide by 3 into cos phi r. What phi r am I talking now? Not 0.8. I'm now changing the power factor at the receiving end because across the load, the load power factor is still 0.8. But across the load at the receiving end, I have put a capacitor. So now I should find out what should be that phi r. Clear? This is now with the capacitor. So without the capacitor, it is same as the load power factor, which is 0.8. But with the capacitor, it is some value phi r. Let us see. So IR is 272.73 divided by cos phi R. I get this relationship. Now I have the relationship Vs is equal to Vr plus this. So we, I take Vr to the left-hand side. I have Vs minus Vr is IR into R, R cos phi plus IR into X sine phi R. This is also R, okay? This is cos phi R. Cos phi R. So Vs I found out here, Vs is 12.14 for a regulation, 50% of the old value. Okay, so I, I have found out Vs. Vr is same, it's still 11 kV. Ir from the previous expression is 273.73 by cos phi r. Okay, into r, r is 0.975 into cos phi r. And then this is Ir. And this is x and this is sine phi r. So this left hand side is 1140. And here this cos phi r will get cancelled. So this becomes 265.9. And this simplifies to sine by cos is tan phi r simplifies to this. And if I calculate tan phi r, I get 0.324 from which I get the receiving end. Power factor is 17.95. Okay. And what is IR? I have found out IR. I have this expression 272.73 by cos phi R. I have found out phi R. So I have the magnitude of IR. And this lags by minus 17.95 degrees. This gives me the magnitude. This gives me the magnitude. I have found the angle, right? So the receiving end phaser is 286.68 at an angle of minus 17.95 degrees. Earlier, it was different. The current is over. So we are talking of the total receiving end. Now, the load plus capacitor. Remember that. Now, if you look at the figure, what is IC? This is receiving end current, IR. This is a load current. Load current is same as before. Whatever is the current needed for 3 megawatts at 0.8 PF 11 kV, that is same. So here, if you see, IR is IC plus IL, all in phasors. IR is IC plus IL in phasor. And therefore, IC is IR. So this is phasor. Okay. Phasor quantities. The load is 3 kilowatts at 0.8 PF 11 kV. So we calculated this current as before without the capacitor. Therefore, I see. So this all this arithmetic you should do carefully. It's all complex numbers. So this is I, I R. That is with the capacitor, the receiving end current with the capacitor. And this is the load current, I L. So from this, I get I C. Why did I get a plus J here? Can anybody tell? Plus J means what? Leading by 90 degrees. 
obviously. What is my reference? My reference is the receiving end voltage. And this is a capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor is the receiving end voltage. And the capacitor's current will lead it by 90 degrees. So the receiving end voltage angle is zero degrees. So the capacitor angle is 90 degrees, which is plus J. Capacitor current angle is that. That's why you got a plus J here. See, if you don't get plus J, there means something is wrong. You have made a mistake in the calculations. That itself is a check. So I got IC. I know what is VR. VR is 11 kV. That is same voltage across the capacitor. So I can find out XC. XC is V by I. I get 94.71 ohms. From that, I get C is 1 by XC omega. I get 33.62 microfarad. So if I put a capacitor of 33.62 microfarad at the receiving end, the regulation will reduce by half. Now you see the loss, the current has reduced. You know, just look at how much the current has reduced. From 340.9 for the same load, load is the same, 3 megawatts, 0.8 PF. For the same load, by just putting a capacitor, the current has reduced, receiving end current has reduced to 286.68. So losses will obviously reduce and therefore the efficiency has improved 97.4% from I think the previous value of efficiency was how much? Let's see. Um, yeah, it was 96.36. So from 96.36, the efficiency has improved to 97.4%, right? Therefore, adding the capacitor at the receiving end improves the power factor, improves the efficiency, and also improves the voltage regulation. Now, don't say it improves the power factor of the load. No, it does not improve the power factor of the load. The load power factor is still 0.8. It improves the power factor at the receiving end. Clear? So adding capacitors is one way of improving the power factor. And as a byproduct, you also get improved regulation and efficiency. Thank you. So uh, in this class, uh, we saw the T model of the medium line. Uh, we saw the concept of parenti effect. And we also saw how a capacitance can uh, boost the uh, performance.